Well, hi. Uh, my name is Pedro. That is a tool I build to have fun with routers. So a little bit about me. I was born in Cozumel Island in the Mexican Caribbean. It's a very beautiful place. You're all invited there. I'll talk about that later. Um, I have been a speaker at uh, many conferences, and mostly I talk about hacking routers, home routers. I love doing that. And um, well, this is Routerpone. You can access it by going to the URL, routerpone.com. What it is, it's a web page. It's a compilation of ready-to-run local and remote uh, exploits, mostly web exploits. It has 115 web exploits. It has two unique generators. Uh, some of the exploits are still zero day, and you can access it in the URL. It's made entirely in HTML and basic JavaScript, so it can run in most devices. I've tested it in many cell phones, and on the Wii is very fun. The PS3 and all cell phones also, you don't have to have a, like a smartphone to run it. If it runs JavaScript, it can run it. It's only one page. I could have made it into several pages, like separate it by brands or something like that, but I decided to make it all into just one single page so you can like store the single page offline and you can use it without uh, internet connection for like local exploitation. So this is how it looks. It has a cool 8-bit glowing logo. And after that, it says the, a lot of brands of routers, home routers. And after that, it has uh, common tools like the Mac to vendor lookup, also the default password list of Fino Elite. Those are linked to those. Uh, the computer search engine, Shodan. It's also a link to the to Shodan. The next one is an Arris password of the day generator. Arris cable modems have this um, interface, advanced interface, that's supposed to be only for tech support, but the program got leaked, and now everybody has it. In fact, if you want the password, you just click on that, and it says this is the password of the day, of today. <laughs> but well, the others, the other two, are uh, ports of JavaScript uh, password generators. Uh, you can find them on the internet. There's a com an backdoor password in Acton-based switches, 3Com, Dell, SMC, the big ones. I ported that from Perl to JavaScript also to include it in the, in the page. And the last one, it's a research a colleague of mine made, Humberto Ochoa. It's a Huawei HG5 something models. You can actually generate the default web from the MAC address of the modem. Yeah. And after that, you can see the interface is very similar to those of exploit pages. The difference here is that in, in the name of the exploit, instead of uh, that when you click on it, it takes you to the definition, to the more information about the exploit. If you click on it, it actually launches the exploit locally. To the, to the default IP. If you want to change the IP, let's say somebody changed the IP of the router or you want to launch it remotely, there's an IP link right next to it, so you can change that. And if you want more information of the exploit, you just click on the plus sign. Uh, let's see. So let's continue. <laughs> 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 Thanks. So um, how do you install this? How do you install a web page? You don't. You can actually access it uh, by creating a shortcut. Everybody knows how to create shortcuts in the iPhone. You just add to home screen, and you have your little icon there. But for Tourcon, we made um, an app for the Android that's available since yesterday in the market that it actually, what it does is just stores the page offline. So you can use it when you don't have an internet connection. And it has all the same things, but you can use it offline. And it's a native Java app. So let's get on with the demos, shall we? I've made a few videos. OK, first a little disclaimer. Um, all of the vulnerabilities I'm about to show you have been reported to the vendors. Actually, I tried reporting them first to the service provider, and uh, they wouldn't listen. So I tried reporting them to the vendors, and they wouldn't listen as well. So I made them all public. This is what I did also for uh, like two years ago in uh, DEF CON for two wire vulnerabilities. I tried reporting them. I even made videos of how to exploit the vulnerabilities, and I got no response from the vendor. I created a ticket in their support system and everything, and nothing. But before, after the DEF CON talk, when I was about to get off stage, when I was still on the stage, somebody with a card that said two wires said, next time you tell me. And I was like, OK, OK. <laughs> and my ticket got escalated like immediately. <laughs> but there's a big problem with this. The, um, 
They told me that the persons responsible to patch some of these vulnerabilities are actually the service providers, not the um, vendors, not Motorola, but actually the, the internet provider. So they don't do it. So all of these vulnerabilities I'm about to show, all of their, them are working in um, at least the Mexican uh, firmware version, latest firmware version of this uh, device. So this is a SBG900 Motorola cable modem. We're going to try to do an authentication bypass on it. We'll try admin as a, pass admin as a username. And the default password is Motorola. Uh, nobody changes that default password, but let's say uh, it's not Motorola. So we'll try something as a password. We copy that something and paste it as a password. Click on login. Never mind that. Remember the password. We can always bypass it. So we click on Motorola. We click change admin password. Paste something. Continue. It should say done, but whatever. Now let's try it again. We'll use admin and the password. We'll just paste that and click login. And we're in the mode. No. <laughs> Most of these vulnerabilities are, are um, web-based. They just are simple URLs or GET or POST requests. But we're working on something to change that. This next one is actually a vulnerability a friend of mine found around five years ago. It's a denial of service vulnerability in two wire routers. But until this year, we figured out it can be do remote, done remotely. So this is a remote denial of service vulnerability in two wire routers. You can see it has it has the port 50,001 open, and we're gonna copy the the IP. We're going to do a, a ping to see if it's alive. There it is. It's alive. It's responding. And then we just click the IP button. This is important. We, you have to click the IP button to launch it remotely. Otherwise, you'll get DOS if you have the modem. We click and accept, and it has stopped responding. Yeah. <laughs> so we died. Um, yeah, it's dead. The next one is a little bit different. Instead of being a uh, web exploit, it's actually the generator I was telling you about, the Huawei generator. These modems are extremely popular in Mexico. So there it is. We try to connect to the modem, and it asks for a, for a the web key, right? We don't know the web key, but we know with any wire driving program that it's a Huawei modem, and that the, there's the MAC address. So we just copy that MAC address. and look for Huawei, there it is. We click on the Mac to web key generator and it's asked for a Mac. We paste that, click accept, and that's the web. So we will try to use this web to connect. There it is. And we're in the network. So these modems actually um, uh, have a little bit more of security because to access the, the configuration interface, you have basic auth. The username is the name of the provider, and the password is actually the web key we just generated. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we're in. <laughs> so this is another very simple vulnerability that leads to a big attack. We have an, an URL. Oh, wait, okay. We have a URL on two wire modems that it's an XML with the configuration of the modem. So to access that URL, instead of looking for it and everything, you have it there in router pwn. You just click to wire the configuration page, and it so shows you the configuration. You can see interesting stuff like the username and password you use to connect to the to DSL, and also other stuff as well as the ESS ID and the default web key. Now. Here's where it gets interesting. I, I already told um, the wire about this. I told them it is a very bad idea to use the default web key to reset the administrator's password. And this is why. I'm going to show you a little bit of how this exploit works. This is the latest firmware from the provider. This is the exploit. It is actually one link. So we'll see how it's done. You can see. Okay. 
will just URL decode it. It uses uh, X XHR as the past exploit we saw. And what it does is it uses three different vulnerabilities to change the password. The first one over here is a cross-site scripting vulnerability. With this, we get into the same zone as the modem. And after that, what we do is we get the configuration file. It's right over there. With the configuration file, we parse it and find the web key. And then we post the web key with the new administrator password in one link. So this is how it looks. We try to access the advanced configuration interface, and to access that, we need the, a password. So it asks for a password. We try auth bypass as a password. It doesn't let us in, so we try clicking on the link, the authentication bypass, and it asks for a new password, so we paste auth bypass, click accept, we let it do its thing, and then it says done. So to try this, we will do the same thing. I try to access the advanced configuration page, and try the auth bypass as the password. And we got in again. <laughs> so as you can see, it's very easy and very fun. <laughs> um, before I continue, I released this, the first version, about two months ago in Mexico, and then at Black Hat also, another version. Uh, I didn't know if I should make it in, um, in English or Spanish or what language, but uh, as soon as I released it, uh, the first month, I checked my statistics. And if you add the amount of visits I got from Mexico and the amount of visits I got from the United States, it's almost half of what I got from France. I have no idea why. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. So instead of Spanish and English, I was about to put Le Exploit instead of Le Exploit. <laughs> so, and I, well, I went into these uh, this pages, uh, French pages, and started looking at the comments, use Google Translate. and. Um, they were comments like, uh, where are the Netgear exploits? Next comment, it is really strange. It doesn't have Netgear exploits. Next comment, again, something about Netgear exploits. So I said, why everybody is asking for these Netgear exploits? I, uh, the first day at Luca, I searched for um, these exploits. I found like 17 of them. <laughs> it's the, the most uh, exploits I have for any brand. <laughs> now I know why they were asking for them. <laughs> so yeah. Um, So this has been pretty much it. Uh, I still have some things to do, such as improve device detection and uh, add more exploits, always looking for more exploits. Also to port more tools and more generators. Uh, there's some other suggestions I've gotten, like to check for exploitation before actually exploiting the device. I went to a talk uh, yesterday that said that exploiting the devices is actually legal in some places. So yeah, I should check for exploitation without doing it. Also firmware version detection, and uh, we're still uh, not, I haven't still decided if I want to do it in native for the phones. I don't know if I want to do it like in their native language or use some kind of phone gap or these utilities to port it to many different ones. Or maybe HTML5 also. Because I want to uh, make it bigger. I, if I can uh, do it natively, I can get access to more than just HTTP. If I can craft packets, maybe UDP, maybe other protocols, it would be much better. If you, want, uh, you have any suggestions, you can use uh, the contact form that is right over there or in the bottom of the page. Here, you can click on that. And um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you very much.